All right, this is Vigor DIY coming to you again with a FYI. Okay, for reference purposes, this vehicle is an E90 BMW 328i sedan. Um, it probably doesn't really matter, like I said, that's just for reference purposes. But anyways, so we're talking about the Guibo uh, Flex Disc, okay? And this particular part is from Euro Parts. This is it. Um, this is basically telling you how to um, line up the arrows. There's a guy on YouTube that pretty much shed a lot of light on this, and probably the only person I've saw done it. And uh, I'll give him credit in, uh, in the link. But he spoke about having the arrows facing the right ways with the flange. If not, you're gonna have issues. I won't repeat it. Like I said, I'll put the link, and you can go watch this video. However, don't be fooled. The old disc. Car has 135,000 miles on it. The new disc. Okay. Now, if you look at them, they don't look much different besides a little dirt and a little, you know, mileage dirt, and this one's clean with the naked eye. So, make no mistake, when you get onto these cars and you pull these drive shafts and you're doing a transmission mount or whatever you're doing, if you can drop this disc, you know, move it. Can you see that? It'll trick you. It looks good, it's not really torn. And you're like, yeah, I can get away with another 20,000 miles, but here's the deal with that. It looks good, right? Yeah. But look, look, look at that flex. I'm barely putting about five pounds of pressure. Right, to twist that. Now what is five pounds of pressure? Um, if you're a mechanic, you know what that is. Um, if you don't, I'll give you an example. Five pounds of pressure is probably a baby squeezing your pinky finger. How's that? An infant squeezing your pinky finger. That's about five pounds of pressure. All right? Transmission on the load to the drive shaft from the output, shaft, uh, the output flange going into the, the flex disc is a lot more pounds of pressure than that. So when you get that vibration and you go up there and you look at it and you say, now nah, it can't be the flex disc, it's got to be something else. It may as well be the flex, the flex disc and a whole other bunch of stuff. Now, like I said, looking at it, it looks half-ass or at least decent. Could have, would have, should You know, wishful thinking, you're thinking, ah, it looks good. If you're there, man, just get rid of it. It's, they're not extremely expensive. Replace them. Here's a new one. Look at that. It's... I'm putting about 10 to 20 pounds of pressure on this baby, and it's not moving. So imagine if this disc with over 137 thousand miles on it worn out, and you've got your engine spinning, rotation here, and then you brake, you do engine brake. This is an automatic we're talking about, so probably not much engine brake, but let's say it's a, it's a five speed, or let's say you mean sport shift on an automatic. And you engine brake or you let up off the gas, you know, a little city drive and you gun it to the next light and you hit the brakes and then you pull, you know, you launch, launch off the, uh, to, off the light, you know, to the next light. All that back and forth on that shaft right there, the disc is getting all that, right? And it wears out after a while, right? And then when you pull it and look at it, you can't understand why you're getting that vibration on takeoff or engine brake, and that's exactly one of the reasons why. So yes, like I said, don't make the mistake and look at it, you know, just while it's hooking up, while it's hooked up looking like here in the car, you figure you don't see any tears. Pull that baby down and look at it because you'll definitely find out that this is probably 50% of your vibration issue in your drive shaft. And the new one, and like I said, this is not the $100 flex disc, it's a Euro part, it's not a BMW OEM, but it's still OEM from Euro parts. So again, they even got the uh, polyurethane ones out there in the market. Some of you guys have probably seen them. I have never tried them, but I have no experience with them. I don't know. Um, if I ever do, I'll probably post something on that. But again, new versus old. Not much of a difference until you put pressure on them. And then you'll see that you wished you would change it while you were there. Like I said, if you're doing transmission mount in a car with a drive shaft set up like this, and you can get access to pulling all six bolts, like some cars, it's a little bit more complicated. But if you if you're in a situation where you can get you can, a situation where you can get access to all six bolts, man, go ahead and do it. Change them. I guarantee you'll take away 50% of your vibration. Okay, 
in your drive shaft. And the other 25% is probably going to be coming from your drive, um, your, your transmission mount and your differential, um, excuse me, your center bearing. Everything else is probably, you know, going to be in a differential mount or somewhere in a U-joint. And all, all the, you know, the vibration I've seen over the years, pretty much the majority of them comes, the majority of them comes from the flex disc being torn, worn, differential mount being torn, worn, engine mount being torn, worn, and of course, center bearing. Those are the key components that you want to look at. If you've, if you've inspected those and those are good and you can guarantee, then you might want to look at your universal joint and your differential mount. And I would look at the differential mount first before I look at the, the universal joint. But if you've got the luxury of looking at the whole line without you know having to drop the exhaust, check them all. Because the last thing you want to do is drop an exhaust and put all that stuff back together only to find out that some of these stuff, you know, it look good on the outside, but they're not. All right? That's just, like I said, Vigor DIY coming to you with another FYI. All right, cool.